curse a glorious day out here in the neighborhood. Absolutely. I'm not going to complain about this. So this, this has been your neighborhood for, for a little bit, for the last few weeks, doing a VA waterfront for your, your initiative, as they say. Yeah, we've been here and uh, elsewhere in Cape Town, but this is kind of the home base. Yeah, now, yeah, my understanding, because I, I, I will say, I hung out uh, about three years ago. Yep. Was, that, was that the first time that you came to the VA waterfront? Or was this initiative started someplace else? Tell us about how you got here to, to this area. So three years ago was our first um, in-person food dialogues since we started way back in 2014. So that was the first one, which was above a coffee shop in Baton Street. Mm -hmm. And then we had a break of about five years. And then we had plans for 2020 in-person food dialogues, mm -hmm. but then the pandemic hit. And so we pushed everything online. And so we had two years of virtual mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. And by the time we got to whatever that is, 2022, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, the VNA Waterfront um, was on board as a sponsor and a co-host. Mm -hmm. So they were able to provide venues and other kind of support as well. So that's what, what got us into these physical spaces. Now, you know, there's this wonderful South African saying that I found out when I first got here. It's like, strength to strength. Yeah. You know? So it sounds like you went from strength to strength. Now this is the third year here. What's the strength that started here? And what, what's the, you know, what's the, my, how, how, how have you gone from strength to strength here in the VA waterfront uh, situation? Well, it's headquarters here. But. Yeah. Um, I mean, today we're at the, the headquarters building um, and the space and a lovely new structure and, you know, lots of exciting um, ideas are, are possible, I think, from this space. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, each year we build on what's worked the previous year and try and learn from what didn't work and make it better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's been that sort of patient persistence that's allowed us to carry on and not try and do too much too fast and get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, and... You know who knows what's next. Well, well, you, you must know what's next. Oh, you, 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 the visionary. You, your pace and precision. I'm not going to try to get you to reveal. You know <laughs> your your grand plans. You know maybe you can see a little baby steps here. But what, what have you noticed for the last say to up to this point? What what, what have you noticed the the progression? What have you noticed? What, what what made you continue? Let's put it that way. So I think more than anything, it's resonance with uh, the people who are involved and the partners who we've approached or have approached us and they see something in the, this kind of platform and program that is really valuable. Mm. Um, it plugs a, a gap, I guess, or it identifies and, and meets a need. Um, when you say partners, what kind of partners are we talking about? So I don't mean that necessarily the name, but what they do. How, how yeah, do you so it? the... Um, I'll, I'll start from the people who are putting some money in the in the game, so that's the the VNA waterfront, their solve side of things. So not the like the landlord side, but mm -hmm. their kind of nonprofit um, and strategic development side of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Solve at the Waterfront, mm -hmm. and then we've got the um, National Center of Excellence in Food Security. It's called the DSI NRF Center of Excellence in Food Security. Oh, and that sounds good. It is. That's a good one. And they're at the University of the Western Cape and the University of Pretoria. Okay. Um, and they provide some funding, but they also have lots of academics and students and researchers and relationships. And so when we need to go kind of deeper into some of these subjects, mm -hmm. we we often tap. Um, into those networks mm -hmm. and they fortunately have funding that they can use to support some of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, we also have had in the past funding from the DG Murray Trust that didn't happen this year. It's going to happen again next year and they've been a good supporter as well. Well, what, what, is, their, what is their focus? So they, they do all sorts of things but the focus um, that we have overlapped on has really been how our food system affects particularly the health of women and children under the age of five. Mm. So they've got a big focus on that. Um, but they also work with smallholder farmers and they've got a whole range of issues that the Food in Daba provides a platform mm -hmm. to engage in. And their network is national. Mm. And so being able to draw in some of the partners that they support or work with into these spaces as well is, is really beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, we've had a project called Effer Food Links which is an EU-funded project. We're working with 15 African cities, five European cities, but African-designed and led mm. about um, 
urban food environment and really focusing on some innovative ideas, hopefully, that make a meaningful difference in these 15 cities. Well, so, so that's a future league. So that's happening now, but the food dialogues are being hosted across a total of five cities. So Cape Town with the food in Daba is one of the five. Oh. But this year for the first time in Ouagadougou and in Tunis and in um, Bale and in Kisumu, there will be food dialogues. And so we've really? also connected with them with some virtual events. We had two virtual events this year that had um, colleagues from those cities talking about similarities and differences where they are. When we did the virtual event on hunger and power, it was really very interesting kind of getting perspectives from a place like Burkina Faso and Ouagadougou, which has active Sahel militants and real challenges between the countryside and the city and so on, which is very different from a place like Kisumu in Kenya or Cape Town. Um, so that's been really enriching um, as well. But that's going to go on for another two years. Um, so that's we'll, solid for two years. That's out two more years. A total of four years. Mm. Um, so this year and next year will be the, um, these other African food dialogues. And then we're working with them to try and find resources to keep it. Well, yeah, okay. um, and then other partners we have are the African Center for Cities, so academic research organization, the, uh, a group at the UCT. Is, is there, is, oh, is, this, is, is it is it continent-wise or just? Yeah. It's kind of, okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that's another one. Um, they do work all over Africa and actually across the global south. So they mm -hmm. have partnerships across India and China and South America and, and well beyond. Okay. Um, and then we have um, the city of Cape Town has been a partner in the past. Mm -hmm. The provincial government has been a partner, mm -hmm. not this year. Um, we have other civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. um, we're partnered with Cape Town TV, so the community television station in Cape Town. Oh, that's a good one. That's great. You and keep you on the ground. Here. Yeah, very much. <laughs> um, and that's so important. Um, we also did a lot of work this year with um, some community radio. They aren't officially on board as partners, but we're finding our way um, with some, some possibilities. Um, we have, I'm just trying to think of the rest of them. Um, there's the UNESCO Chair in African Food Security and Education mm -hmm. that is part of the group. Um, we'll say UNESCO, that's, that's the UN? The, the U United Nations um, cult Basic cult Cultural Organization. Okay. Um, so when you've got World Heritage Sites, for example, and other sorts of cultural and heritage projects, that's mm -hmm. the umbrella thing. And then they fund certain research chairs that mm -hmm. focus on particular topics. Mm -hmm. So there's one that's University of Western Cape. Um, Remember what the, there was another speaker, Stephen Devereaux, who talked about the history of famine and oh in, yeah, in this, one day, this, this, oh he's fantastic. Yeah, in a one-day conference, he's also um, got a UNESCO chair, but I can't remember the the difference in that. But it's food systems related. Um, well, that so guy's a superstar. Yeah, no, yeah. that was really an incredible, um, very impressive, incredible session. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. kind of putting all that in context. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of partners, and then the V&A Waterfront is the only private sector, like. Um, corporation that is a partner, but again, because we're working with their nonprofit um, corporate social investment kind of side of things, um, we've never had any commercial pressure from them or interest. So, I mean, the VNA represents something like 5% of South Africa's GDP. Really? They've got um, 80 eateries themselves, a couple of thousand employees, or not their own employees, but staff, people who work in the food space they've yeah, got a very yeah. mixed development yeah, yeah. Um, here and they're like a community within the city and mm -hmm. so finding how they belong how they can innovate and maybe drive change um, be a good host for other things going on um, we found the relationship very very beneficial well you know in, 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 in the scheme of the, I'm not a businessman but they say that it takes three years to really start a business whatever have you now, now I'm, I'm, I'm looking just three years ago now, now yeah. I'm talking about the whole seven ten years or whatever yeah. it is but it almost seems like that 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 mark there now three years is up mm -hmm. so there has to be another jump now let me just ask you that. I want to be I want to be delicate about this go for you it must, you must have been a lot of strain for these first three years because that's how startups are if you would so what's the strain? How are you going to cope with the next, <laughs> the, the, say, the next three years or whatever it is? Yeah. Like that, like that. Look, I think the, um, the opportunities for us are to make good on this rebranding to an Indaba, yeah. which I think puts a stake in the ground for something that's a bit more than dialogue. So mm -hmm. dialogue still being at the core, but an Indaba really speaks to a much broader and deeper um, intention. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about food Indaba, we're talking about interrogating our food system and not just in dialogue, but trying to drive some change. So there's a, we've got to put up 
now that we made a stake, you know, on on this brand in Daba, and that means um, looking at yeah, taking advantage of the Pan African, but also the Pan the cross South African networks and interests and themes and topics. We have worked from Cape Town. Sometimes we've been a bit too parochial. So I think the next three years will be about a broader South African and African engagement. Well, you did mention the global South. The, the yeah. Indian, all that. So figuring out how to how to actually do that in practice. So because of this other project that has connected us with these other African cities, we're fortunate to have a network of colleagues and people who are also trying to do these event programs. So how do we make that? real beyond the current funded, grant funded project mm -hmm. is the challenge. Um, and then also having a team within our organization that can continue to work on this throughout the year beyond just Ian as the event project manager. Mm -hmm. um, there is interest in um, more local and theme specific events. We did a small one in Johannesburg this year that was kind of a pilot of a food dialogue um, we've been approached by people in Durban and other parts of South Africa. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and figure out how to have these, these dialogues mm -hmm. that then link into an annual Indaba that picks up the themes mm -hmm. and that has a much um, more diverse and richer draw. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we have good contacts from academics and people in civil society. But the important thing is that when people are on the ground, kind of what's their experience, what are they... You know what do they have to say? What do they need? Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we need to stay grounded. So yeah. I'm very much looking forward to making that real. But that means we've got to pay the bills. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to keep it too much longer, but I do have to get just a tiny bit uh, personal with, with all this. Almost like a, a what do you call those jugglers? You have all these um, the things that you have to move around, juggle around. It, it, as, as they say in the sports world, you must have a big brain. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So we're where does this big brain come from? What what, what made you? What can, yeah, what makes you? What makes you? What, what, where did you come from? That that makes you want to drive for this kind of a change, this kind of thing that you're doing. Mm. How how deep do you want to go? <laughs> I don't know. Must have I can ask you a through line. You know, when you <laughs> no. was a kid, did you did, did you save the frogs or no, something like that? No, no, not at all. Look, I mean, I I I think that. Um, my own personal experience of getting involved in the food system, starting as a volunteer with some others, a community food garden down the road from where I live, um, was a very powerful experience realizing what, how the food system connected people, how food connects people, um, and realizing, learning just how problematic our food system is. So it's kind of recognizing the problem and the potential. Um, and then... Um, you know, in Cape Town, we've had the an event program called the Food, uh, called the Design in Daba. Oh yeah, for about there. 25 years yeah, when it first started. Ran exactly, and I take a lot of inspiration from what they were able to do in terms of shaping people's understanding of what design is and what it's for and what their role is in design. So, mm -hmm. in the beginning, it was kind of creative directors of ad agencies mm -hmm. and design firms and that sort of thing. Um, and after 25 years, Cape Town has been the world design capital. We mm -hmm. talk about design as designing systems and designing cities and designing all kinds of things mm -hmm. that is about, you know, putting intention into the way things work. And mm -hmm. so that kind of, that's probably a crap definition of design, but <laughs> it's no, richer the way, than the way just things work. No, creative. really, seriously. I, I, when, I, when I, I was involved when they first, when they, they had a, a workshop there yeah. and I was involved. It was kind of, I'm, I'm going up there just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and and we, they, they put us in, like, in groups, and they were like six different groups. Now, I'm into trains. Mm -hmm. And another group, this guy, uh, Brandon Busey, he took the train to, um, uh, he was teaching, so he took a train every day, right? Mm -hmm. So our solutions, when they gave us certain things, mm -hmm. both of us in different tables, we had train solutions, mm -hmm. which, 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 which what I'm trying to say to you, your staffing does help, does does matter because if you draw your staffing just from this or that, just from academia, for instance, or just like you said, then you're going to have a different look, mm. you know, like that. So, I think that the 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 design thing was interesting because I think they realized, hey, we can't just be uh, this one thing. Well, what 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 we believe design is, we have to bring a lot of different people, the the street people, whatever, in, and. Um, 
uh, even in this workshop here, I'm sorry, I'm talking not too much now, but in this workshop here, they talked about the street vendors, mm. basically, and they call it info, but the street vendors versus, you know, the the, the big thing, how how the people sort of not the, 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 the try to get rid of the street yep. vendors, but they, they you know, those, those, those kind of things, I guess, that the fool and Daba puts a spotlight on, mm. that why your initiative is so va valuable. Mm. So I'm just asking you, um, I'm looking at this and I'm saying like this is really interesting and valuable and but how do you maintain the whole uh, bottom to top you know the, the, everybody yeah. the entire society or you know like that yeah I, I, I don't know we're figuring it out as we go I mean I think that's the challenge to ourselves is um, to be open to growing not for its own sake um, and to Ask for feedback and learn from our lesson, you know, learn from our mistakes and and that sort of a thing. And as you said, I think you, you've got to have really good people. You know, this this isn't me kind of standing up and saying, "Here's the vision, everyone go and do it." It's here's some opportunities we have. What do you guys think about how we can do it? Mm -hmm. And let's bring in some people who might be critical, and let's bring in some unusual voices, and let's listen to what's actually happening and bring them into the space. And I think there's an approach that is having kind of resonance rather than there being some sort of um, ideal vision that says we must do X and just coming back to the design in Daba um, example the, if, if we can do through the food in Daba if it takes 25 years or whatever a shift in understanding of how people relate to food and their understanding of the food system and their motivation to try and change parts of that food system and we talk about a shared food culture instead of exclusive foodie cultures mm -hmm. and we we think differently about our relationship to you know indigenous and endemic edibles and the oceans and on and on then we'll have started really meaningful change and that i think is is the deeper inspiration mm -hmm. um and if we get even close to that, I'll be happy. I'm truly going to let you go. I might be lying. <laughs> but um, the, one, another thing that I noticed that some people, some of uh, the presenters, uh, some of the, the, the chefs have returned. Have you seen a, uh, um, how I say, an uh, upbringing of their game? Or have you seen any change in, the, in, in people? Uh, they, now they understand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, have you seen any moment? What does that look like to you? Um, so you, the, behind that is, um, I think, a, an astute observation that a lot of the events that we do are conceived of as like a once-off. So we're doing um, a, a meal today in this amazing space, the Portwood Cafe, and we're not going to do this again in this way. So there's a bit of like live performance element to it, mm -hmm. which can be inspiring and amazing, but can also be a bit risky. And so if you have chefs who are working in an unfamiliar kitchen and they're really chefs and not caterers and you've got to serve 50 people all at the same time, and mm. it takes practice. And, you know, restaurants really hone their craft to get ready for a new menu or to open or whatever. And we, we don't do that typically. Um, and so when we do find people and, and um, elements that work, mm. then we try and build on that. And there are times also when chefs or presenters or others really felt like they have more to offer or we felt like they had more to offer mm -hmm. and so inviting them back to say you know let's let's try it again mm -hmm. um, makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. um, but you know the flip side of that is we we can't get locked into okay we've got our five chefs and our two venues and our three workshops and you know we we have to continue to push beyond that so maintaining that creative tension is is I think part of the magic mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, 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 as, a, as, a, as an observer, you know, I think that what you're doing is, is, is amazing. I, I've been involved in a lot of in, uh, initiatives that, that, in hindsight, people say, ooh, that was amazing, like that. And this is truly one of the most amazing things I've seen. So t tell, us, um, um, tell us your whole name. Yeah, I'm Kurt and, well, Ackerman. <laughs> <laughs> and how, if, if people wanted to get in touch with you, blah, 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 or, or, or in touch with the initiative, what do they do? Yeah, so the website is foodindaba.org, O-R-G, um, and my contact details are, are on there. That's fine. And if anyone Googles me, that's the Kurt Ackerman in Cape Town, I'm pretty easy to find. Um <laughs> And, you're you're uh, a big time muckety muck in Cape no, Town. No, 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 it's not that. It's, there are a bunch of Kurt Ackermans who are, it's a German name, so oh, yeah. you'll get architects and other people, but mm -hmm. I'm the one that you'll find in Cape Town and working on food. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, 
I, I, I live in the Eastern Cape, but, but you know, I'm, I'm attached to, to Ian. Ian's attached to you. If if if, he'll, if, if I show up next year, because I always laugh it out on the calendar because I'll be traveling around. Um, I would love to hang out again, and maybe we'll talk again another time. We'd love that. Thanks, Anthony. Uh,